Good morning, the Lord be with you. As always, it's good to be here in the house of the Lord, to worship Him, to thank Him for His love, for His mercy, for sending Jesus Christ to die for our sins. So that's wonderful. Today we celebrate in the Christian Church the 25th Sunday after Pentecost. Our order of service will be confession and absolution that we find in our hymnal, page 151, and then we are going to have a hymn, and then after that we go to prayer and preaching, which is in page 260. So for that we don't have a printed order of service except me. Sorry about that. And we could follow the, the service on the monitors if you prefer. A uh, few announcements before we begin our service. I want to thank all those who are serving in God's house today. God bless you and thank you for doing this work in God's kingdom. Uh, voters meeting. Remember, we have voters meeting next Sunday here at Faith, uh, November 26th after service. We will be approving the budget for 2024 and electing new members for the council. So. You, Everybody is encouraged to attend, not only those who are water, members of the Waters Assembly, but as well, anybody if would like to participate in the uh, decisions and activities of the, what we are planning for the church, come forward and bring your ideas. So that would be wonderful. Also, as you know, the sacred season of Advent, Advent begins on Sunday, December the 3rd. So we prepare our heart to, to receive our Savior who, come, who comes and is coming again. Our first midweek Advent service as well begins on uh, December the 6th. So, and then we're going to have on the 13th and then the 20th. But anyway, so what we are planning now to have our soup supper. And I know, I, I, I gave an idea about pizza, but then no, they didn't want that. It's a soup, okay. <laughs> so I don't like soup, but anyway. There's only one soup that I like. <laughs> Somebody's gonna make it, so that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Anyway, we are looking for members who would be interested in, in preparing soup. Uh, two members each week will be wonderful, and as well, if somebody would like to, to bring bands as well to, with a soup. There is a sign-up paper in the, in the hallway in, in that entrance, and you could sign it over there, put your name there if you are willing to bring soup for that, those three, any of those three uh, midweek services that we will have, Advent services that we will have. Uh, something that I'd like to mention, that is a lady looking for to rent a room in London has been this announcement for a, for a while now. If you have a, or you know somebody that is renting a place, so please contact the, the name of that, the phone number that is there. And her name is Pamela. Is a friend of a member of the church. Again, coffee hours of faith is always has been there. So if you would like, to, if you can do that, please let us know in order to put it in, in the in the bulletin and prepare the coffee and clean up after that. So I hope that you are able to, to do that. And as well for this week at Faith in Grace, you could see that those activities that we are going to have uh, here uh, at Faith and, and at Grace, and you could read it by yourself. Again, take the bulletin with you and no other activities that we are planning here at Faith and Grace. So that's it. So we are ready to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please rise. And let us begin with the invocation. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with God's kid's son. My God is so great.
Hello, children, come forward. Mis amigos, come forward. today. That's wonderful. I'm going to be here in the middle with you. So it's good to see you. How's everything with you? Come on. I don't know. I can't hear. How's everything with you? Good. That's wonderful. Good to hear. So today I have a message to you and to everybody here. It's about talents and gift. Do you know that you have talents? Yeah? and gift that God gives us. You know, one of the things that uh, I have, but uh, it's not so perfect, but I have the talents, the speaking languages, <laughs> two languages. I know Spanish is my first language, that's a talent that God gave me, but as well he gave me another talent that to speak to you in English. I know I have an accent, you know, I know you, you hear me well. But what about if I speak to you in Spanish, do you understand? Hola, ¿cómo están ustedes en este día? ¿Qué, qué dicen ustedes? Oh, son varias. Muy bien. Oh, boy. So that's, an, that's the only thing she said. Okay. But you know, that's a, that's a talent that God gave me, that we speak in another language. So uh, God brought me here uh, from Nicaragua and came here. And by the way, if somebody from Nicaragua won the... Miss Universe, you know all about that? <laughs> so I am the Mr. Universe, okay? <laughs> no, I have, no, anyway. But the thing is I have that talent God gave me, brought me from that country here to come here and lead the people here in worship and in word and sacrament. So that's a talent. Perhaps I have another talent, but probably you have talents. And I have an, a person here who has a talent in music. Is, she's here, no? She's here. Raise, raise her hand. <laughs> yes. You see, and she's using that talent in the church, but as well at work, I guess, in others area, because that's the talent that she has, and she's using that one. But we have as well different talents, and I think that uh, somebody could be a good singer. You know how to sing? Singing, no? Who is, uh, has that talent? You see, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. What about in computing and all that things about computer telephones and all that? Probably you as well have. And I think that you as well that, that knowledge. So God gives us talents and gifts. And he wants that, from, that we use it, those talents. For God's kingdom is wonderful. Uh, somebody who's good at painting, for example, doing craft. So why not to use those talents in, God, in, in God's kingdom? So God give us talents, even if there's only one. That me, I have only that one. I would love to have that gift of music. Yes, indeed, I would love uh, to play an uh, instrument, for example. But I don't have that talent. But I have to understand that God give us talents, and even if it's only one, why not to use it in God's kingdom? So, thanks the Lord, I am using the language in order to bring God's word to you. So, I want you to keep that in mind. You have talents, you have gifts. I know that you are young at this moment, but you're going to be growing and seek those talents and use it for God's kingdom because this is what God wants that we worship the Lord using our talents and bring the word of God to other people, and that we all together give you honor and glory to him, our God and our Savior. So that's the message for all of you this morning, and let us pray at this moment. So let's, let's bow our heads and let us pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God we thank you for the gift you have given each of us. We pray, we pray that we will be faithful in using this gift to show others, to show others how, wonderful you are. how wonderful you 
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. That's it. Go to school, Sunday school. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Please rise. We continue with the exhortation. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you and thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call, an ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the hymn, Come Thou Alone Expected Jesus. rise. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is true. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever.
be seated. We continue hearing God's word. The first reading or Old Testament reading for today is from Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 7 through 16. A day of wrath is coming. A reading from Zephaniah, the first chapter. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord hath prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guests. And on the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's sons and all who array themselves in foreign attire. On that day, I will punish everyone who leaps over the threshold and those who fill their master's house with violence and fraud. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will be heard from the fish gate, a wail from the second quarter, a loud crash from the hills. Wail, O inhabitants of the mortar, for all of the traitors are no more. All who wail with silver are, are cut off. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the men who are complacent. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, Sorry. nor will he do ill. Their goods shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hasting fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lawfully battlements. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading for today comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. Encourage one another to live in God's light. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not in the night or of the darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep, us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and of love and a helmet for the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the responsory. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The gospel reading for this morning is from Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 and 30. God gives talents, expecting them to be used for his purposes. And this will be the text for our meditation this morning. Please rise to hear the gospel. Jesus said, for it will be like a man going on a, on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the, in the ground and hid his his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. 
And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also, who had the two talents, came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sowed, and gather where I scatter no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to, for to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the catechism part, the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other God. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his servant or maid servant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbors. We continue with the Apost Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to her. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For times the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the sermon hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, with God's help, we are going to meditate in the gospel lesson that I read a, a while ago, Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. And the theme of this sermon, this meditation, is used what God has given you. Dear Christian friends, the whole chapter 25 from Matthew speaks about three themes, about the ten virgins, the parable of the talents, and the final judgment, which we will hear next Sunday. And our meditation for today is about the parable of the talents. God, I want you to keep that in mind always, that God has given us abilities and gifts. Uh, this could be a spiritual gift or natural faculties of mind and body, positions, influence, money, education, and every earthly advantage and blessings. Also, our God freely gives pardon, life, hope, joy, and so much more to his children. When you use his gift or talents to invest in your own faith or make more heavenly profit by reaching out to others, not only will your own joy increase here on earth, but you will be rewarded. If you choose to do nothing with God's gift, you will be held fully accountable. And all this started in chapter 25 uh, about uh, the, the apostle and disciples asking him uh, about the end of times. And they were curious. The apostles were curious about when this end would come. The apostles did not grasp why Jesus came to die for us on the cross. So, Jesus spoke to his disciples privately. He called them privately to warn them about false teachers and more chaos as the world abandons the message of the cross. His real concern is not when Christ will return for the day, but what you, his servants, are doing until then, in the meantime. Jesus tells this warning for you. And all this could be arranged in three points. One, a master supplies capital to invest, given what each needs according to the abilities, then he lives. Second, growth is guaranteed. But in what form? We're going to answer this question at the, later. And number three, each servant is accountable to the master. Christ is the man in the parable. Your master has gone to a far country and will visibly return on an hour you do not expect. Luke chapter 12, verse 40. Or as our epistle for today says, the Lord will come like a thief in the night. So he's not going to send us a text message or a letter. I will come next time, uh, next Sunday. No. He will come. The word of God says the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Friends, the five talents or five bags of gold spoken here is 19 years wages. Imagine that a lot. Think of all of you what you earn a year. Multiply that by 19. If you own a business, would you trust a common employee that much riches? See God. God trusts you. God desires for all to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That is, salvation is in Jesus Christ alone. He trusts you, his servant, with his precious word to tell others 
for their good. God uses words and sacraments as his chosen tools to bring and keep people in faith. He orders you, his servants, to tell the gospel in your daily living and life goals to others around you and the world will come to faith in Jesus. But God does not give equally. No. He provides some of you richly with the skills of management, money making, speaking, writing, art, music, hospitality, teaching, friendliness, youth, medicine, and thousands of other abilities. Some of you have many talents. Some of us have few. God gave this to servants. God trusts you. He has given you personal resources that can be used to carry out work in his kingdom of grace so that people will hear about Jesus, believe, and be saved. In verse 15, Jesus asks you to manage no more than you can handle. Jesus, our Lord, is certain of your limits, our limits. You could read that one in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. So he supplies you, me, with his resources, his capital, and he gives abilities to labor in your location in life. Your life is not your own. You were bought with Christ's blood. Your life, talents, positions, abilities, and opportunities all belong to God. All belong to him. Does God de deprive you from using his gift for your personal purposes? No. He does want you to enjoy his gift of absolute forgiveness, life, family, friends, and more. At the same time, he wants you to realize his gifts are first to seek his kingdom and Christ's righteousness. In short, God expects you to invest for his business as you go. Until Jesus returns, or he calls you through death, you have his gift and orders as his servants. Keep the following in, in, in your mind. In Jesus' parables, one or more things do not work the same as they do in real life. Trust with that much wealth is growth guarantee? And the answer is the following. There is no such thing in earthly life due to sin. You can work hard on your farm all year, then be wiped out by accident or weather. You can put your money in the bank for your retirement, then the dollar collapses, and your money is worth half of what it was before. You should take care, good take care, of your, your health with diet, exercise, and social interaction, but you could still be struck with cancer, injury, or depression. Earthly investment have no guarantees of success. Heavenly growth is guaranteed in God's form, in God's ways. Now or another time. Jesus says, my word will not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and prosper in the thing for which I send it. God always blesses faithful labors. Blessings may include money, health, security, food, and successes in earthly sense. But he does not pledge that for you. If you plant beans, do you expect to, ha to harvest pizzas? If you put a pie in the oven, do you expect to pull out a car? Of course not. 
You are given God's riches, the gospel, to apply in life. It is crazy to expect ungodly riches to be the main desired result. But the Lord, who does not do things the way we do, may add these things unto you. As you seek first his kingdom and righteousness. Friends, there is joy and excitement while serving Christ. When you serve Jesus, your life always has a purpose. What you do is important. You use the priceless treasure of the gospel to forgive others who have hurt you. You tell others in a card, letter, or visit about the hope within you because of the cross. In joyful Christian faith, you offer your skills to help someone who will never return the favor. You create music to draw a weary soul to the, to the cross. You give an offering of money, trusting God will use it to support a church or missionary telling about Christ. God gave to you his servants according to the ability, abilities he gave you. And in the unique circumstances, he put you in. Then in response, you acted in faith. God gave the increase. In the parable, God rewarded their joyful service with a job promotion. They went from labor to management. They were faithful over the little things of eternal life. God's rewards are certain for each who believes, but for those who do not. Friends, since your life is from God and your talents and your opportunities, is it any surprise for servant number three in his day of accountability? The third servant was not just too lazy to get to church. Jesus calls her or him wicked, evil, damned to hell. Not only did the servant fail to truly pardon others, tell a neighbor about Jesus and invite them to church, sacrifice an offering for missions or any other actions to serve God and their neighbor in genuine faith, she or he refused to do anything with their God-given talents of faith, even for their own self. There was no interest. If that servant sat in the pew, rarely they saw God as a hard man who required his time and money, a God to be obeyed rather than loved. He had a title, servant. He was afraid he would waste his life serving Jesus. So he pursued business, sports, family, friends, and all the extras God gives while ignoring the one thing needful. He buried Christ and he left him in the tomb without resurrection and for them too. The tragic end for that wicked servant did not have to be, but that was the servant's choice. The Lord will judge unto you and every person according to their words. Friends, through and genuine faith is always a busy and active thing, wrote Martin Luther. When any wicked and slothful servant will not so for the Savior or gather for the gospel, there is accountability on the final day. Verse 30 from our text begins an eternal punishment. But the reality, my dear friends in Christ, is that none of us deserve any reward. And here comes the gospel. Before was the, the law. You and I must confess we are like the third servant. This parable, as I said, is God's law. No man's opinions about God, but his word to us. 
God's law always accuses, always condemns, and always crushes you, me, and all people. There is no reason why even the best of servants should be rewarded. We have only done our duty, writes Luke chapter 17, verse 10, even at the best of times. But God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, as today's epistle proclaims. I'm going to read it again. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. There is our only source of hope. There is our good news of God's mercy. There is God's for us. So we can be, who can be against us? There is the Lord in his faithfulness and compassion. That is why God gives all things. Because of Jesus, you are God's beloved servant and saint and child. Because of Christ, you have gifts and abilities, you have life and opportunities, and you have guaranteed growth as you serve. You have assurance on Judgment Day that all of your failures and sins have been forever forgotten in Christ's perfect life of service in your place. And they have been paid for absolutely and eternally by his death on the cross. By grace, you can hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. By God's grace, heaven is yours. Thanks the Lord. Amen. We continue collecting the offering. We're going to be singing the hymn, Faith and Truth and Life Bestowing. Please rise. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
for season of all weather, and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphans, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, especially this day we remember Nancy, Ellen, Colin, Michelle, Justin, Sandra, Isabel, Laddie, Mary, Tom, Corey, Brian, John, Pastor Saulo, and his pregnant wife Kira, for Pastor Ron, for Pastor Gerald and his wife Doreen, for Linda, for Wes, for Barb and Stu, for Lloyd and Elsie, for Mircha, for Vicky, for Patricia, for Dorothy, for Gerda, for Sandra, for Melissa, for Karen, for Shirley, for Nancy, for Alice, for Marcia, for Pan, for Rachel and her children, for Jason, for Walter and Donna, for Cheryl, for Becky, for Anna, for Delbert, for Grace, for Nancy and Stan. We pray also for those we name in our hearts and minds. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. We pray for all the families of our congregation, especially for Daniel, for Pinky, for Jennifer, for Jessica, for Josh, <clears throat> for Justina and Jason, for Salatiel, for Nira, for Rahul, for Rachel and Sarah, for Christopher, for Rebecca, for Aiden and Abigail, and for Niels, that they lift up their hearts to Christ and seek his forgiveness and walk together in peace and love till the end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Hardy, for Pat, for Jessica, for Lydia, for Al, for Ruth and Catherine, who celebrate their birthdays this week that the Lord keep them in good health, and they may rejoice in his abundant blessings and give thanks for all his gifts in their life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord <clears throat> for the members who celebrate their wedding anniversary this week, especially for Brian and Carol, for Gary and Debbie, and for Rick and Linda, that our Lord sustain their love and they strengthen their union with forgiveness and mutual respect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. <clears throat> For those outside the Christian faith, that God would remain patient with them and delay judgment day, so that the Holy Spirit may have opportunity to bring, bring them into God's family of believers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those nations who are facing wars in the world, we remember Ukraine, Russia, and the Middle East, that our Lord gives their leaders wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions, and they lay down their weapons and seek peace and reconciliation. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that our Lord would hold and protect them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Finally, for this, and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Dispel from us the works of darkness and grant us to live in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith may never be found wanting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Amen. heavenly Father, 
through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that evil foe may have no power over me. Let us bless the Lord, the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you and preserve you. Thanks all for coming for this Sunday worship. God bless you. Go out and serve the Lord.